Today is July the 1st, 2021. Hi, my name is Frank DeMora. I'm the author of the book, The Last Chronicles of Planet Earth. And at this channel right here that you've been watching, I continuously give you the signs of the last days. Those signs that Jesus Christ told us to watch for just before he returns. Now, here at the BibleProphecyMan.com site, is where I post most of my videos, but I also give almost on a daily basis the news connecting Bible prophecy to current events. So if you'd like the book for free, The Last Chronicles of Planet Earth, go over to my prophecy site, BibleProphecyMan.com or EndTimesResearchMinistry.com. You can download the book there as well for free. Just click this link and the book will come up right to your computer and you won't have to pay a dime for it. Now, one of the things that I have been warning for many, many years has to do with the skyrocketing food prices that Jesus talked about. And please keep in mind, this is only one of many prophecies that we are supposed to watch for for the last days. I want to give you the simple message that Jesus Christ gave to us so that you'll understand very, very clearly what is about to happen and what has been happening. Now, in Matthew chapter 24, Jesus gives us a warning. I'm just going to pull this section up right here where he says, For nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be, take a look at this, famines. All right, that's what we're going to be dealing with right now. But you'll also see pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places, which means many places around the world. So famines is the subject. And there's a lot to this subject as you're going to be seeing. Now, when you go over to my prophecy site today, I'm going to have this link up here. When you click this link, it's going to take you over to my warnings. You'll see that some of the warnings by Frank DeMora concerning the rise in food prices. And please, take a look at the dates. You'll see right here, 2009. Again, December the 15th, 2009. Moving to 2012, 2013, 2014, 15, 15. And the list actually continues. So over the years, these many years, since the Lord put me in this ministry, I've been trying to get you to pay attention specifically to famines relating to the rise in food prices. And there's going to be other factors involved that is going to cause these famines. And we've been seeing crazy weather lately, and I'm going to be discussing that in this video as well to bring it all together for you so you can see that clear picture. Now we know Jesus talks about famines. Then in the book of Revelation, Revelation chapter 6 verse 6, you'll see this warning from Jesus where he says, And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny, and see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. Now, this seal concerning Revelation 6.6 6 has to do with the third seal. It's the black horse, and this is the pale rider on it. And a lot of these pictures, they hold up a scale, a balance scale. Now, here's a good picture of what I was talking about with the black horse and, of course, this pale rider on it with the scale. And it really is significant because it's alluding to the famines that Jesus Christ was warning about. And, of course, we know that it's going to reach its apex during the tribulation period when all the people who flatly refuse the message of salvation of Jesus Christ will be cast into the tribulation period to face not only famines, but all of the rest of the prophecies that Jesus warned about before he could return. So this rider represents hunger and famine. We can see this from the symbols accompanying him. The horse he rides 
is black, a color that describes a famine-wracked body. The black horse has a rider with a pair of scales in his hand, which we already talked about. A scale would be used to measure and carefully dole out food, which is going to definitely happen during a tribulation period. It could refer to the bread being rationed by weight in a famine or grain being measured by volume. We see this being done in the Old Testament. In the siege of Jerusalem, the people would eat rationed food in anxiety and drink rationed water in despair. You'll see that in Ezekiel chapter 4 verse 16. God told the Israelites that they would suffer famine if they sinned and they would be forced to dole out the bread by weight. That's found in Leviticus chapter 26, verse 26. And of course, as I said, the apex of how it's going to get so bad, as we've never seen it before, that will happen during the tribulation period. Now, a voice accompanies the vision of the black horse and its rider. It announces the following here. A quart of wheat for a day's wages, and three quarts of barley for a day's wages. And again, that is Revelation 6.6. 6. The expression a day's wages is a translation of the Greek word denarius. The denarius was a Roman silver coin equal in value to the daily wage of a working man as seen in Matthew chapter 20, verse 2. Now, it's interesting that the Bible scholar Robert H. Mount says the price of wheat and barley as described in the vision appears to be 10, I get this, 10 to 12 times their normal cost in ancient times. So in effect, what we're expecting is the cost of food is going to skyrocket it. And as I've been warning over these many years, as you'll see all the way back in 2009, the food prices, almost on a yearly basis now, have been skyrocketing. And they're continually to get worse. Let me give you some examples, recent examples, of what I'm talking about. Now, considering the fact that Jesus said there would be famines, and in that same verse, in verse 7, he talked about pestilence. Now, let's put both of these together because we see disruptions in our food supplies because of a pandemic, COVID-19. You would have to be brain dead not to have seen the news how this pandemic has disrupted food supplies in many places around the world. And as there are disruptions, it does affect the food prices. Take a look at this video about this very matter. Understand what I'm showing you here could lead to significant price inflation, which we are already seeing. Without a question, this COVID-19 has definitely caused an impact not only on shipping of food around the world, but it's 
taken its toll on the cost of food as well. And especially now as the mainstream media is pushing this new Delta variant of this COVID-19, the prospect of more shutdowns and higher price because of those shutdowns of the meat packers and so on is on the minds of a lot of people. And you can see it right here. Global farming suffers from falling prices, labor shortages as virus spreads. So let's take a look at a few of the recent news reports talking about the surging of these food prices. Here's Natural News that came out June 24th of this year. Surging food prices force restaurants to increase cost in menu items. Now that, my folks, is a pretty steep increase from 735 to 1320. And if the pandemic continues to get worse with this new Delta virus that seems to be spreading, or at least that's what we're being told right now, things could get much, much worse. It goes on to say that people in Massachusetts have been complaining about the rising cost of other food products like produce, meat, and prepared food. But this phenomenon isn't just happening in one state. According to the National Bureau of Labor Statistics, the price of cereal and bakery items have risen by 5%. Fruit and vegetable prices have risen by 1% and daily products are up by 0.6%. On June 21st, 2021, there was an article that came out, prices that we've never seen before Rising food costs hitting restaurants hard. Now here's a short video on this. It is a price problem. The cost of food is going up at the grocery store and at your favorite restaurant. We're paying more for everything from bakery items to meat. And as WBZ's Christina Hager found out, restaurants are now forced to choose between charging more or eating that cost. Have you noticed the cost of filling your fridge these days? That the cost of produce, the cost of meat, deli, things that are prepared um, have gotten more expensive now. Red meat for steak tips and steak was $7.35 a pound. Last week was $13.20 a pound. Nick Rando owns ZD Trattoria. He says chicken prices are through the roof too. So they haven't gone up, they've almost doubled. Cereal and bakery products are up 5%. Fruit and vegetables, these are up 1%. Milk and dairy, up 0.6%. And when you're buying in bulk, that can really add up. Yeah, you see it at the register, but when you're buying like 300 pounds a week and all that, it's, it starts to hurt. So much. He has to raise prices on his menu to avoid operating at a loss. We have seen prices that we've never seen before. Jim Salikas runs Cousins Maine Lobster, a national chain of lobster roll trucks, along with his sister Annie. So we're just seeing this like continuing ramp up of demand on the, on the entire lobster system. Adding to the high demand for delicious food now, higher transportation costs and a shortage of workers. It all translates to higher prices for meals served. Just the sign of the times. Mm -hmm. You know, prices go up, gas goes up, groceries go up. Opening the door to an expensive summer of eating. Christina Hager, WBZ News. This problem that we're facing isn't just a few states. Take a look at this article that came out. Global food prices have reached their highest point in almost a decade. Food prices increased in May for the 12th consecutive month. Here's why it did and why it's concerning. Global food prices have risen to their highest point since September 2011. Thursday's recent report from the UN Food and Agriculture Organization documents the 12th consecutive month of price increases. Between April and May, global food prices increased by 4.8%, the highest single month increase in more than 10 years, said Al Jazeera. 
To measure average food prices, the Food and Agriculture Organization monitors a basket of five foods, including cereals or grains, vegetable oils, daily products, meat and sugar, reports Rutgers. All five foods have increased in price. How much more expensive is food worldwide? Global food prices has risen every month over the last year, according to Rutgers. In May 2021, food prices were 39.7% higher than they were in May of 2020, says the Food and Agriculture Organization. Cereal prices have increased Take a look at this, 36.6% since last May, reported the Food and Agriculture Organization. Vegetable oil has increased 124% over the last year. And when you look, it says daily products have become 28% more expensive over the last year. And the, the Food and Agriculture Organization said, Meat prices have increased by 10% since May 2020. Again, the same people giving us that report. Sugar prices are up 57% since last year. Why have food prices risen worldwide? Food prices have increased for a number of reasons, said Rutgers. Southeast Asia slowed its production of vegetable oils while the biodiesel sector increased demand globally, Rutgers reported. Brazil, the world's largest exporter of sugar, experienced, now look at this, droughts in key growing areas causing a delay of harvest and crippled crops. And of course, droughts is part of the last day's prophecies the Lord said that was going to take place uh, just before he returned. Demand on grains unexpectedly surged in China, causing global stores to be depleted. And again, that was from El Jazeera. It's unclear how COVID-19 pandemic has played a role, if any, in the rise in food prices. Why are increasingly high food prices concerning? The steep and continued rise of food prices raises three concerns. Low-income countries, developing countries, and import-dependent countries will feel the effects of rising food prices most painfully, said Rutgers and Al Jazeera. Historically, rapidly increased food prices have caused mass social unrest. In 2008 and 2011, spikes in food prices caused food riots in 30 countries. The global hunger problem has reached the worst point in years due to pandemic-related food inequalities, recent extreme weather, and political conflict, according to Al Jazeera. Higher food prices will continue to exacerbate the problem. And these are all the signs that Jesus said you will see, and we're seeing them. Now, here's a good question to ask. Will food prices continue to rise? Well, if you know the Bible... You know the answer to that. This is what they said. Summer weather for crops in Europe and North America will greatly affect the current food situation. Good weather would help considerably, said El Jazeera. However, poor weather could make the problem worse. And if you have been following the news, like Jesus said we should be doing in the last days, you should have seen how the weather patterns and the extent of these massive heat waves are taking a major toll on crops, not just in America or Europe, but in many places around the world, where this changing weather pattern is affecting all kinds of crops. Now, when we're talking about the weather, take a look at this, because it does affect what you're going to be eating or what you may not be eating because of the intensity of the sun and drying out the, the crops, lack of drinking water, lack of water for the crops. Here's an article, half the country is facing an apocalyptic summer. And you can see how through this map, the temperatures are rising. Look at this, 120 in many different areas around the United States. It says, deep drought and early heat waves are setting the western half of the United States up for a dry, fiery summer. About 91% of the West was in drought 
as of June 22nd, with 55% experiencing extreme or exceptional drought, while two back-to-back -back heat waves acerbated the drying of soils and vegetation, increasing the potential for wildfires, which is another prophecy Jesus talked about, that he was going to scorch this earth with fire. Meanwhile, water supplies are dwindling. Lake Mead, the reservoir formed by the Hoover Dam, is the lowest it has been since 1930s when it was first filled. And California reservoirs are 50% lower than usual for this time of year, according to the Associated Press. The current conditions are part of, take a look at this please, part of a 22-year-long drought in the western U.S., the likes of which have not been seen for more than 400 years prior to 2000. But this summer is likely to eclipse the drought of the last two decades, said Benjamin Cook, a climate scientist at the NASA Goddard Institute for Space Studies. I mean, these temperatures are so extreme now, you would have to be brain dead not to understand something is happening. All of its glory and wonderment. It was built as a monument to America's ascendancy, providing power and water in a country hungry for both. Yet this triumph of engineering risks becoming a monument to the global tragedy of environmental change, as the reservoir which powers the Hoover Dam depletes. We're in the 22nd year of drought in the Colorado River Basin. Lake Mead is at 35% capacity, and that means we have about 25% less ability to produce power. Nature displays its distress well. The white band is the watermark, vividly showing what the level was and what it has fallen to. This reservoir, which supplies the dam and 25 million people, is now at an all-time low. We will very likely be declaring shortage for the first time ever in the Lower Basin for the year 2022. The electricity for 8 million Americans is produced by the Hoover Dam, this vast site powered by Lake Mead. To protect electrical output, a shortage declaration would reduce the water supply to homes and businesses. People need to conserve water in every way that they can, in their homes, in their landscape, rising temperatures offer huge challenges to the lake and the dam. Drought and climate change are the major problems here, but this year's super high temperatures mean that evaporation has reached record levels too. Enough water is lost every week from here to fill 15,000 Olympic-sized swimming pools. And we're going to stop it right there. I hope that you're getting the point that the very conditions that Jesus said would occur are now, in fact, occurring. These are the birth pangs that Jesus listed for us, for example, in Matthew chapter 24. And let me point out this very important fact for those people who still don't want to believe the words of Jesus Christ or pay attention to his warnings. Never before have we seen one single generation see all of the same signs that Jesus mentioned happening all together at once, except for our generation. And it even goes further than that because he pinpointed when you would see that by the rebirth of the nation Israel. Because we know from Matthew chapter 24 that when Israel was born again as a nation again, that that generation would not pass till all these things take place. And this is why we're starting to see each year not only the food prices going up, but the heat going up and the lack of water going up. We're seeing everything else that Jesus said all at the same time. Let's take a look at this next article. Study hundreds of lakes in U.S. Europe lose oxygen. And keep in mind, one of the prophecies that I am not really going to discuss today, but it is very, very important, is the prophecy from Hosea where we're told in the last days, birds, fish, and animals would be dying off in mass numbers. 
and we're seeing this sign as well. One of the reasons why we're seeing, for example, fish dying off is because of the heat, the intensity of the sun that is taking oxygen out of the water. And when this happens, you have algae buildup, you have less oxygen for the fish, and massive, and I mean millions and millions of fish dying off in many parts around the world, which you can see because I have documented just about every case that I can find over these many years, and they're all listed in my book, that you can click that book and look at each article if you want. But let's take a look at this article that talks about this loss of oxygen. And, of course, we're dealing with the U.S. and Europe, which are massive territories. Researchers say oxygen levels have dropped in hundreds of lakes across the United States and Europe over the last 40 years. A new study suggests the oxygen loss can lead to more fish dying and increased algae growth. Scientists examined the temperature and the amount of dissolved oxygen in nearly 400 lakes. Dissolved oxygen is the amount of oxygen gas contained in water. They discovered widespread drops in oxygen levels. The study recently appeared in the publication Nature. It found that dissolved oxygen decreased an average of 5.5% in the surface water of the lakes and 18.6% in the deep water. The researchers say their findings suggest that warming temperatures and decreased water clarity from human activity are causing oxygen levels to fall. Craig E. Williamson is a biology professor at Miami University in the state of Ohio and a co-writer of the study. He told the Associated Press that testing for oxygen is one of the best ways to judge how healthy water systems are. The study's findings suggest a pronounced human footprint, he said. That footprint includes warming caused by climate change, the researchers said. In addition, decreased water clarity can be caused by runoff from human waste systems, fertilizers, cars, and power plants. Losses in dissolved oxygen in Earth's water systems have been reported before. A 2017 study of oxygen levels in the world's oceans showed a 2% drop since 1960. But less was known about lakes, which lost two to nine times as much oxygen as oceans, the study found. In the past, other researchers had reported oxygen decreases in individual lakes over a long period of time. But those studies did not examine as many lakes around the world, said Samuel B. Fay. He is a biology professor at Oregon's Reed College who studies lakes. Now I'm going to stop it there. The uh, article he's reading is pretty slow, but I think that you get the gist of what they're saying here. And as you go back and read this full article by yourself, if you'd like to, you'll find out that the living creatures in these water areas, whether it be shallow or deep, are being affected by less oxygen, which is killing them off. And considering the fact that we take food from these sources, these bodies of water, and our food sources are diminishing, you should take notice, again, what Jesus stated. And one of those things that he stated was higher temperatures, and two, 
there would be mass die-offs of animals in the water. So everywhere we look, we're seeing the results, the products, the completion in the works of the warnings of Jesus in our generation. There's no way you can get around it. Now, just to give you an example, when we're talking about the animal die-offs and the fish die-offs, let me just break down just a few of these last articles that came in that I'm adding into my book. You'll see thousands of wild birds dead because of the avian flu, which has to do with the pestilence. 500 plus cattle die from hailstone. We've been seeing all kinds of strange weather, which Jesus mentions in the book of Luke, chapter 21. 2,500 cattle dead due to the drought. And again, we've been covering droughts in this, so you should understand the meaning of lack of water and droughts and how it's affecting not only wildlife, but us. 738 manatees dead this year in Florida. And thousands of dead fish and other marine life wash up on Gold Coast in Australia. Mass die-offs of juvenile salmon in the Klamath River, a worst-case scenario. Large numbers of birds dying in D.C., 42 cows killed by lightning strike, 13,000 birds killed due to avian flu, again, more pandemic for the animals, 134,000 birds killed due, again, pandemic, avian flu, and this is South Africa, 30,000 cattle dead, guess what, drought. I'm hoping that you get the idea, Jesus is telling us the truth, and you should pay attention. Now, I recommend that you go to this article. You could do the Google search. UK high tax on meat and dairy products coming. Mass food shortages. Food riots. Now, we know, as you already heard back in 2008 and 2011, there were food riots in many nations around the world because people riot when they're hungry. And if they can't afford the food, trust me, they're encouraged to get it any means they can, which caused a lot of death during 2008 and 2011 because of those riots, especially in the Middle East. Now, I'm going to put the link up at my website, and it'll give you access to this video talking about the shortages and the food riots that they believe will be coming because of edicts that are being set in place upon the people here in the UK. Now I just want to show you two other articles, very important. Temperature of 121F sets new national record high in Canada. Now Canada is supposed to be one of those countries that are relatively cool because of the weather patterns we have seen for so many years. But everything is changing. Places that are normally cold are becoming exceedingly hot. Temperatures, as you see here, broken records. 121. They don't even see those records half the time in Las Vegas. Grim news emerged in Canada's western most providence of British Columbia on Wednesday, just one day after one locale and region set a new all-time record high for the nation at a scorching 121 F, which is Fahrenheit. The death toll from the unprecedented heat wave had climbed into the hundreds. So there's a lot of people dying off because of this unusual intense heat. And keep in mind, Christ pointed out this planet would be scorched with intense heat. And each year, we're seeing it get hotter and hotter. You can believe it, or you can pass it by, reject Jesus, and enter into the tribulation. And if you think these temperatures are hot, you're not going to like what you're going to be seeing during the tribulation period, because it's even going to be hotter. And then finally, because we are talking about pandemics in this video, and how it's affected not only the travel, but it's affected life. A lot of people dying, obviously, because of the pandemic itself. How it's affected the food chain, deliverance of food in, to many areas. But also how governments are using the pandemic to push an agenda. To forcibly move people in the direction that they want to move people. 
and in many cases now, beginning to violate rights. Now, what we know from the scriptures in Revelation chapter 13, and you'll see why I'm pointing this particular verse 17 out to you, and it says that no man might buy or sell, say he had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. So what we know from Revelation 13 is the Antichrist, when he comes, he's going to be forcing his identification mark, which we see what it is. Here's the wisdom. Let him have understanding, count the number of the beast, for it is a number of a man. And his number is 603 score 6, or if you want, 666. So this man, Antichrist, will be forcing everybody that he can to take his identification number. And if you don't take it, you will not be able to buy or sell anything. Now, with the current pandemic, this COVID-19 that spread globally and shut down the world for over a year, now we see governments pushing, moving in the direction to force people to do things that they don't want to do. So listen to part of this video where he talks about this issue and he does reference this buying or selling limitation by governments. Watch this. To uh, go ahead and put on hold uh, that proposal. But we're, we're watching not just this county, but other counties up and down the state who are eyeing such similar uh, vaccine passport mandates. So what's the idea? Would, would people not be able to enter, do shopping, or would it be certain businesses that would not allow people in? Yeah, it's, it would be one that would, uh, first off, with regard to the government, um, it would limit the ability for individuals to get services, like, for example, going to the Department of Motor Vehicles, getting your driver's license renewed. Uh, so the government, that's one aspect of it. But another aspect is dealing with uh, merchants, um, you know, being able to uh, enter into a, a retail establishment, uh, being able to attend a, a rock concert or a baseball game. Um, those are serious concerns and serious concerns, not just in terms of, you know, individuals who don't want the vaccine, but the broader picture is are, are dealing with concerns of an act of government that is beyond the powers of government. Uh, this is the United States of America. Uh, this isn't uh, China. Uh, this isn't the former Soviet Union or you know, some totalitarian state. This is the United States. We're, we're based upon freedom and liberty of individuals uh, to be able to decide for themselves and make decisions for themselves and deal with those consequences. Uh, we're not used to the, the government being such a overt nanny state that it could actually control whether or not we have the ability to buy or sell to come or go. That is new as a new challenge to our country and that's why so many Americans are taking this so seriously. The complete interview with this gentleman talking about these mandates that are being issued, as we're starting to see in the news now every week, this video will be played in its entirety by going over to my website, and you'll see it there. I recommend that you watch the whole thing. So what we do know is at the end of the day, Somehow, by whatever means, if it's through a pandemic like this where governments use to herd people into the direction that they don't want to go, mandating that they have to have a passport with COVID vaccine credentials, only God knows. But at this point, the direction that we are seeing these governments taking us is in that direction where people will not be able to do what they want to do unless they can show proof that they have been vaccinated. Look, all I can say is this. Please take it into consideration what Jesus is showing us because he is the truth and he's doing this for a good reason. What I mean by doing this, he's given us this information and he's showing us the connection and he's good enough and loving enough to warn us far in advance so that we would make that decision to receive him as our Lord and Savior. Please do it today. Don't wait. He doesn't want you to end up facing the Antichrist. He doesn't want you to end up on a planet that's going to be burned, intense heat, lack of water, starvation, droughts, famines, 
wars, pestilence. He doesn't want you to be there. And there's no reason why you should be there unless you reject God, the Messiah, the Son Jesus, who died on the cross for you. Give your life over today to Jesus. Please, don't waste any more time. You don't know the day and the hour where you will be leaving this planet. And if you leave it without Christ's blood on you, there's only one direction you will be going, and that is in a lake of fire. I know the Lord would much rather have you in paradise with him for eternity. This is Frank Demore. God bless and thank you for coming to my channel and to my site.